Welcome to Touch Technology Review today, a follow-up review on the 2019 27-inch iMac. I actually produced my first review on this unit about six months ago. That was really well received, so thank you very much for all the views and comments. I did receive a lot of varied comments about that particular video, so in this follow-up video, I'm going to provide some answers to the most commonly asked questions. I'm also going to give you my opinion about how it's been performing for me as a digital creative, as a YouTuber, and anything about it that I think you need to know after six months. So let's start with the overall performance of the iMac. I picked up the i5 ninth generation model, which is the top of the line unit that you can find on the Apple store. And I purchased the base configuration with eight gigabytes of RAM and the two terabyte Fusion hard drive. And at the base configuration, it was performing everything I needed to do reasonably well. There was a little bit of lag here and there, but I thought that it was quite adequate the way it was. I did want to get a little bit more speed out of it, so I decided to upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes. I purchased two crucial 16 gigabyte modules and installed them myself. So if you want to see how to do that, I'll leave a link to the video on how to do it in the description box below. So now that it's on 32 gigabytes, I've got to say it runs a little bit faster. It's generally a better experience. When I'm editing video, it's a bit less laggy. Uh, the rendering times might have been improved slightly, but it's just a general better experience by having the additional RAM. And certainly it allows me to multitask a little bit more. So I found that when I was rendering video out from the timeline in particular, it kind of made the Mac very slow and difficult to use whilst I was rendering. So now when I'm rendering a project, I can jump into a web browser, open up Photoshop and continue to work because that additional RAM really handles those multitasking requirements well. Now on the topic of RAM, one of the biggest questions was how much RAM should I get? Should you go to 16, 32 or 64? Or theoretically, should you take it all the way up to 128 gigabytes? I think 128 is overkill. 64 would be nice to have, but not necessary. And for me, 32 gig is a sweet spot. The reason being the cost of purchasing 32 is quite reasonable. And when you look at your actual usage of RAM, it'd be very unlikely you could use more than 32 gig. I've performed a few tests using the system profiler. And even when I've had Premiere, Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, multiple apps open, rendering video out from the timeline. I've never been able to use more than around 28 to 30 gig. So I don't think having more than 32 will offer you much advantage. Having said that, as apps evolve and develop over the coming years, they might start to use more RAM, in which case, if you want to future-proof the Mac, then you might want to consider going to 64. So it all depends on your budget as to how much RAM you should get and what you're looking to actually do. So for me, 32 was more than enough. The next frequently asked question was in relation to the Fusion Drive, whether it was a viable option for video editing or whether you really need to get an SSD drive internally. So in my opinion, the Fusion Drive has been performing quite adequately. However, I do notice a little bit of lag here and there, which I think I can attribute to the Fusion Drive. It's got an eight gig video card. It's now got 32 gig of RAM. It's got the i5 ninth generation processor, which is quite fast. So some of the lag that I'm experiencing here and there, which isn't significant by the way, I think has to do with the read write to the drive. So if you can afford it, I would always suggest yes, go for SSD storage. But if you can't, the two terabyte fusion doesn't really slow you down in any significant way. So the lag that I'm talking about only happens here and there, and it's really infrequent, and it depends on the size of your project. If you've got multiple layers of video on the timeline, you kind of notice it a bit more. If you're adding lots of effects to the project, again, it starts to kick in, but it still is quite usable. In terms of adding an SSD drive externally to speed up your Mac, I actually experimented with that. I added an external Samsung T5 drive and I compared working on the same project on the internal Fusion drive with working on that project and all, all of the assets on the Samsung drive and I couldn't notice any difference. There was no real advantage in working on an external drive. Now that's probably because those drives are only rated at 540 megabits per second and you're also limited by the bus connecting it to USB 3. So if you picked up a more high-end external SSD drive 
with Thunderbolt 3 with a higher read-write speed, you might get better performance out of it. But I think if you're really looking for the ultimate performance, you should be considering an SSD drive internally that comes built in the machine directly from Apple. So if you're a pro user working on really extensive professional projects, then, and you really need the ultimate in performance, I think you need an SSD drive internally. If you're producing a few videos for YouTube, five to 10 minutes, a few layers on the timeline, you'll easily get away with using the Fusion Drive. And in terms of reliability, I've had no issues so far. The next question that came up was in relation to the noise. Is there any noise coming out of the fan? Well, you'll get a little bit of noise when you're working on video, if you're rendering out a project, if you've got lots of layers on the timeline, and it will kick in occasionally, but not all the time. And the fan noise, I would say, is of a moderate level. So it's not too loud, but it's not whisper quiet either. So you will hear it kick in occasionally, but not all the time. If you're just working on word processing or Photoshop or Illustrator, you barely hear it at all. It's mostly when you're working on video edit or even programs like Logic for sound production, etc. So in my opinion, it's at a moderate level and not a problem at all, but you certainly will notice it as you're ramping up any of the processing requirements of the machine. The final thing that people asked was whether you should consider going for the 27 inch model or the 21.5, which is obviously much cheaper. If you go for a 21 inch model, you could probably spec it up further. You could add the SSD storage and get the better performance, but then you get the smaller screen. So I think you really have to ask yourself the question, what is a priority? What are you actually looking for? For me, I wanted access to the largest possible display. Having come up from the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which was my daily driver in the past, I wanted to make sure that I had the largest possible screen to get the most out of the screen real estate and just have the better experience in viewing that 27 inch monitor. I don't think it would have been a big enough jump going from 16 to 21. And certainly if you're already on a 21 inch iMac, you're not gonna see an update there. So I would prefer to have a larger display than the extra processing power but it depends on your needs. So it depends on your priorities. Do you need processing power or do you want the best possible display? If you've got the budget for both, go for it and get the i9 processor in the 27 inch model, get the SSD storage and spec up the RAM. But if you're limited by budget, I would probably choose it based on the monitor first, then I'd go with the extra RAM and then I'll look at updating that processor as a last step and certainly considering going to SSD only if you have the budget. So that's my advice in relation to choosing between the two different models. As I said, in summary, it's been a great experience so far. It has replaced the MacBook Pro that I had. It was a 2016 inch model. I found myself using that on a daily basis, even though I probably shouldn't have. It was just handling everything I needed quite sufficiently, but I prefer working on the iMac compared to a MacBook now. Because of the posture as well, you can sit up straight, you get a massive display, and it just does everything you need it to do. So overall, I've been more than pleased with the 27 inch iMac. That's pretty much it for me on this video. If you've got any questions or comments about this model, let me know. If you're looking to purchase one now and you're not sure whether it's the right time to buy, just a further note about the product cycles with Apple, they usually do it on a yearly basis and we get an incremental update every year. It's been going on for the past seven or eight years in this particular model of iMac. Each time they get significantly better, but there's not a massive change. I feel that by 2020, maybe 2021 now, we are probably gonna see a major revision to the design and one of the things that wasn't really changed that we kind of expected this year was a change to the bezel. You see there's a massive chin and bezel on the design of the unit, which I don't mind at all. But in keeping with the modern design aesthetic, I think they're going to eventually do away with that. So next year's model might see a bigger display in the same footprint and uh, we'll have a slightly revised design and of course, better specifications all round.